Hi and welcome to Export Kit. In this example, I'm going to demonstrate how you can create a responsive Android app targeting multiple devices with your Figma design. And we're going to be using uh, the latest Android version. So be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell for new and upcoming videos. And let's jump right in. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to QA our screens. And we have a couple here. Now, these are just random screens that I pulled from a, well, basically a free pack. To export these, there are a couple settings that we have to take care of with Android. The first one is that uh, in default with Figma, what it will do is the project name will reflect either the frame you're selecting or the name of your actual Figma file. So this will need to change. You're going to have to make it uh, the name of your first frame or, well, any frame in particular, but that will become basically your main initializer in your output. So it's very important. We can just keep it at the first frame. So our first frame is called Home. So we're keeping the project name as Home. Now, the next step we're going to want to do is disable web fonts. And the reason is that you only want to keep this enabled if you already have Google Fonts installed in Android Studio. So let's just go ahead and make our first export for QA. Now we just need to extract the files to the current location. Very important with Android, uh, when you're doing a new export, uh, what you should do is basically delete the existing files and then simply re-extract a new copy. Uh, this way you won't have mixed assets. So once we go into our Android folder, we're just going to copy all the files. We're going to open up Android Studio and you'll see this is the latest chipmunk version. We're going to go with no activity. And for argument's sake, we're going to call it my application. The only important thing is that we want to keep Java as the language. Kotlin support will come soon. While it's building, we're just going to navigate to our, our Java project. And we're going to go to app, well, let's just say our Android project, source, main. And we're just going to paste our files. We're going to replace the files in the destination. We can just head back to Android and let's QA some of the layouts. Okay, so our home looks pretty okay. Uh, just take note that it's rendering for a Pixel 4. We did not use responsive screens yet, so it's probably not going to look as great as it should on other screen sizes, but we'll deal with that shortly. Let's check login. That looks fine. Uh, welcome looks like images are missing. So let's just go ahead and modify these very quickly. So if we go back to the design, this did not render. So let's just give it an image tag. And we see here, oh, there's a rectangle in the code. If we hide the rectangle, okay, so it's not the rectangle. Class example is the image. So let's just put these into a group. Let's give it an image tag. Let's call it main image. That's a good enough name. Now, we're going to re-export, and what we're going to have to take note of is because we were editing content, we're going to have to change the project name. Again, in the future, we're going to make this much simpler, where it will automate this. And then let's re-export. Now, we're just going to want to delete our previous uh, export folder, re-extract it. And these steps are going to be very important because we're working with uh, the same project in essence. Now, a lot of videos I state to just simply recreate a new project, but this is how you would deal with the same project. So in our drawable, the only thing we want to keep is the IC launcher. So we're going to ensure that we keep that file. Uh, no DPI. We don't need anything there. We can delete that. Drawable V24, we want that for our foreground. And our layout, we can delete. So let's go back and let's repaste. Now let's give Android a second to reload. And there we go, we have our images. So let's test to make sure that we don't have any errors. Now, we, we haven't done any navigation yet, so we're only going to see one screen, which is our home screen. And that's why it's very important to change the project name. Uh, that way what it will do is it will reflect that uh, activity as the main activity. So you'll see here this is our first activity. 
Okay, so we're going to switch over to prototype. And very important with prototyping, you don't want to prototype a folder. So you'll see here that this is a frame or if it was a group, you want to prototype the elements within the frame or the group. So let's just drag the background. Let's drag the text. What this will do is it will add a navigation to each individual object, which is what we recommend. Or you could use a hit area to basically denote all the elements within the group. Okay, so we have our basic prototyping. Let's go ahead and re-export that. We just want to make sure we change this to home or the first frame that we have available. Now, because we're updating our project, let's remove the old export. Let's re-extract. Copy the files. Go to app, source, main and res very important because we're updating the files we only need the IC launcher so we can remove the others drawable no DPI that can be removed and the layout can be removed and then let's repaste now we only need to do this uh, basically for updating one of our, pr our previous projects if it's a brand new project you can just uh, cut and paste the files so let's reload with the changes and let's ensure we don't have any errors. So we just have to terminate and start the, ad the app again. Now you can see that we can navigate and we're able to go within each page. So because this is a form, for argument's sake, let's just add a couple form elements to this so we can edit it. Let's go back to our design now Android uh, what you can do is you can use basically any widget as long as you use a class tag so this is edit text now we're probably gonna have to make it slightly larger this looks a little small let's do the same thing for the password let's give it a class edit text we're gonna assign properties which is that it's a text password. Now there are different ways to use layer tags uh, within the plugin itself and you're gonna have to check these out online especially Android. Android has a lot of use cases so let's just increase the size a bit. So now that we've done this let's go ahead and re-export. We're gonna wanna make sure that we change this to home. Move our old export. Re-extract copy our files and this is just for updating an existing project app source main res drawable we want to remove everything but the IC launcher remove the drawable no DPI remove the layout go back to main let's paste our content and replace and then we can go back to Android Studio give it a moment to load Let's just restart it. It might tell us again that we're going to need to terminate. Yes. Okay, so let's stop the app. Restart it. Oh, whoops. Okay, so let's navigate. Now you see that we can edit all of our content as you normally would. And this is also a password and we go to our last page so you can see now we have a working and navigating Android app along with a couple widgets for uh, well I could have done a search here as well so along with a couple widgets for some inputs and you can recreate any widget in essence so the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna make this responsive so it works across a couple of different devices and let's just see does it work on a foldable no, only partially Nexus 7, it's also partial. Okay, so let's go ahead, let's just add a couple responsive screens. So at this point, you're gonna wanna save a version or a copy of your file before going responsive. So let's just open responsive screens, tab over to Android, create. Now, all of your prototypes will be saved and in essence, they will work as they should. 
The only thing we want to make sure is that when we're using responsive, we want to ensure that dynamic is selected. You do not want this unselected. So let's go ahead, let's export. Let's remove our old export, re extract. Copy the files. Let's remove everything except the background launcher. No DPI can go, layout can go, and let's paste and replace. Now you should see that we have a variety of layouts for each device depending on the size that we're targeting. And in essence, you can target as many devices as you'd like. Uh, sometimes it may not come out exactly what you're going to have to do, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, is in essence resize the project depending on this particular device size. So uh, let's show an example. We have a 393, so this will render with a 360, um, not the 400. But if something is within 400 to 480 with a high density, it may not look as it's expected. So you may have to go back within your design and, in essence, create another responsive screen for that exact design. So you'll see now that 600 looks uh, better because we have a design for that. Let's see, Android TV. Android TV is almost there. Now, if we go back to Figma, to be honest, this is just a matter of adding additional sizes and we just wanna make sure it goes from lowest to highest within our responsive screens, generating them. And then in essence, you'll have your entire working Android project. So uh, let's just retest to ensure everything's working correctly. restart and you'll see we still have all of our functionality and it will also support multiple devices depending on the size that because we've rendered all our sizes that we require now we can also do not only the responsive sizes we can also go to customize and add responsive assets so let's check that out and see exactly what that'll create. Let's just copy our files. App, source, main. Now you notice that we have a lot more layout folders and this is because we created a lot of additional layouts. So let's remove everything but the background launcher. No DPI can go. And we wanna remove all the layout folders that were created. Now let's go back, let's re-add. You'll note that now we have all our drawable assets and our layouts depending on the sizes. So let's go back to Android and let's see what it's done. If we check our drawable folders, our drawable folder, you'll notice now that the images now have basically uh, one per frame set and this will reflect the size of the screen or the target device so quickly and easily you can create any prototype Android app uh, with any target screen and it doesn't take that much effort just resizing content then away you go